with John Spieth. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Hello, Carol. <coughs> We're getting ready to kick off here. Okay. Ready? Yes. If you'd like to call the meeting, please. please. Would everyone join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Welcome to 2020. That's why we get used to this writing our checks and more there. Uh, let's approve the minutes of the December 17, 2019 meeting, please. Mr. Baker? Second. Mr. Curry? Is that all yes, vote? Yes. Yes. All right, girl. Okay, I want to sign in tonight to speak of it, right? No, yes, sir. Okay. It's good to presentation reports, and we'll let the finance director Ray Evans give us an update. He's got a hand out here somewhere. Okay, this may be my shortest presentation, or if it gets extended, it's all up to you all. Yeah, it don't matter. Say, don't say you that. ask all the questions yeah. you want. Um, First four pages, after the title page, is just a balance sheet as of December 31st. I still haven't closed the month of December, so most of these numbers are pretty much final, but a few things will change whenever I close December. <clears throat> if you go to page five, that's a tax collection, something we've always talked about throughout the time that I've been here because we've all been worried about, you know, especially what happened to Boone County four or five years ago. I try to watch this. Right now, every year I've been here, <coughs> collections keep going down and down and down. And they're down again this year. Uh, December's was, I don't know, maybe thirty-five or 40000 down from where it was last year. I think we had one good month that was September. Uh, but every month when I get those checks, you know, the big checks from the courthouse, they're just not where, you know, we want them to be. So... 300,000 or, yeah, a little over 300,000 down from last year. And, and last year's we weren't, you know, up to where we were the year before. So with that, I always urge caution, you know, caution whenever we go to, to make any decisions that involve money. But hopefully, you know, when, when March and April come around, maybe we pick up and maybe we were better off than where we were last year. It's just that's not something I can predict or the assessor or the sheriff's office. We just don't know. Sales redemption. That's um, land uh, where they're selling land. From what I can tell, whenever I get those receipts, because sometimes they're big, most of the time they're really small. So I almost thought it was like a, a penalty on it. It's quite a so, fluctuation there. 1920 and 18. Well, if you look at the other years, they were all low. And I get those throughout the course of the year. So, like I said, sometimes I got two checks earlier this year. One was like four dollars and something, and then the excess levy was like seven dollars. It's all from redemption. Um, so that's never anything really big, but. While wow, this year's down from last year, I'm not real sure. Well, Ray, what's uh, this inventory tax that they're probably going to do away with? Where's that at in this? Do you know what you're calling I do not that? know. I don't know the answer to that. Oh, okay. Well, they want to do it. Yeah, they're, they're going to bring it up again. <coughs> I'm not sure what that would affect. I don't know. Here in Lincoln County, it's probably going to affect us. Shouldn't affect us too much. No. The thing about it is not only have to pass it, but it's got to get a two-thirds vote of the citizens. Yeah. So I don't know if that's got to help make it. But I can check in. Well, I'm just curious how much it will actually walk here in Lake County. I bet it's not that much. I bet it's not that much. But somebody like Kanawha Cabell's got a lot of businesses in yeah. you know, Mon County and those places, I'm sure it's affected quite a bit. If you go to the next page, page six, uh, there's cash balances. 
as of December 31st, cash balance was 4.7 million. That's down just a little bit where we were at last year at that time. Now, if you remember, earlier in the year, I told you about the catch that we had. We, we had a, a good supply of cash, but here we go, towards February. And next month, that'll be closer to $2 million than $5 million. And it's just the way everything hits. Now, what I've tried to do this year and at the end of last year, and I think that's why we were in such a, a better position at the end of the year last <clears> year, <throat> was the way that I requested the federal drawdown just to help alleviate some of the problems of what the state auditor is doing and what they require now. Uh, I tried to do those monthly, and I haven't drawn any, I didn't draw, well, I haven't drawn anything down this month yet, but I will, and I'll be able to draw down everything we spent in uh, special ed <coughs> this month. As soon as I accept that grant, it's out there for me to accept it. Once I accept it, then all the money that the county's been carrying in federal projects and special ed will request that. Right now, it's about $300,000. Um, I, I think I requested, I'm thinking about 550000 in the month of December. And some of that's come in, but not the big one yet. And it was, um, I think, some of the 21st century money and the CSI money is what that was. So, uh, and it may may have hit. I won't know till we check with the banks. Um, when the bank statements come in, we'll go and pull that stuff offline and reconcile the accounts, and we'll know if, if that one for CSI, I think, there's $350,000 that we carried up until the month of December. So I, th I think we'll be okay. But every year when I'm here, I always tell you, you know, at least the last two years, I saw it three years ago and last year, and maybe we see it this year, the cash just goes way down in February, and then we slowly build <coughs> up. What they do with the state aid formula is in the months of April, May, and June, they increase your percentages that they give you, so it helps alleviate some of the problems that, you know, if you're having tax cuts or problems. And you can see from that other page that we're not getting the money from the county, so we're going to rely heavily on the state aid to get us through the months of February and March as we build that cash back up, which I'm sure we will. Because um, like I said, we're not carrying the federal programs as long as we have in the past, just because of what I've had to change. So, but everything else, you can review these expenditures. Um, I think last year somebody noticed that the oil was way higher than what it was in previous years. And whenever they, when the PO was written, it was coded incorrectly. Some of the gas was going into oil, so I had to get that out before, uh, I think I did that about May. So things like that happen, especially, you know, Amy's still learning the ropes down there, and, and uh, we got new directors, and not everybody knows how to code it, and I don't catch everything that I get coded on. I catch some of it, but not all of it. And uh, so, I think we're in pretty good shape. Nothing really sticks out. But I think we're okay as long as we, you know, don't have any huge expense that, that hits us really quick. Like, you know, I always talk about the, the big pink elephant in the room with, with that structure of Duval. You know, we, we need to save that money. Save money just in case we have to do something there. But that's pretty much it if you got any questions. Sure. I was just trying to hit on the high points. That one tax stop talked to you about the time to natural gas wells or uh, I talked to the assessor, the assessor the other day. He still doesn't have numbers, but it's not going to be near as bad as he thought it was going to be. Matter of fact, it may be up a little bit for us. Well, that'd be yeah. anything that can go up for us is good. But he can't just take you know, we keep losing enrollment. We keep losing state aid. I don't know how we've been able to stay afloat, but, you know, we did really, you know, pretty good at the end of last year. At some point, that's got to just, we keep losing kids and we keep losing state aid formula. And, you know, we worry about grants disappearing where we, we're paying people next year. You know, we're planning on paying people out of certain grants next year and they may go away. Well, those people have to go back to county and we gotta find someplace else. It can get bad really quick. You know, I, I, you just, you don't know what the legislative branch is gonna do and how it's gonna affect you. Um, 
the federal government with those grants, like the CSI money, if it goes away, we're going to have to get really creative on how we pay some people, hoping that uh, we can stick them back in that if it comes back. Mr. McGiff and I have had a few conversations about that, trying to <coughs> plan ahead so we don't get stuck doing something silly that's going to hurt us in the long run. Um, but, you know, what, what we were able to do last year with, with the little bit of carryover that we had, you know, which was more than what we'd had in previous years, I can't see that happening every year with us losing so much money. What, what did that last year was we had a big payment in Medicaid and in our food service, we didn't have to, to do as much with the county match. And that was probably half of that carryover now because we, we really had a really good year in Medicaid, the best since I've been here. Now, I think years ago before I got here, uh, before some rules were changed, I think some of the Medicaid settlements were really high. But those two things, I think, helped to carry us. And, if a couple things go wrong, it does worry me that we're going to be in a bad spot. So. Okay, we're going to enroll the numbers for us the other day. We're down, we've lost 20 students since October. Since so October. I mean, <clears throat> Each kid that we lose is $5,299 and some odd change. I got that number the other day. Um, I get, I get a, I guess the PSSP, the projected and the initial part of that that they send out has how many were over on the certified list. They break it down by kid, you know, how much per student. And it used to, I think it was just a little over five grand, but now it's, you know, just a few cents shy of $5,300 per kid that we lose. So if you lose 100 kids, there's a half a million dollars that you lose. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to calculate. How many does that make us down last year? So that will hit us, I guess, next year because they use, they plan the formula off the most recent completed <coughs> years. So. Kevin, has our homeschool numbers increased since, I think two thirty is the last number I should have Yeah, there. we're still holding pretty close right there. Well, I mean, we've had a few more. It seems like I get one or two every week, you know, if, if they don't go homeschool or at least inquiring about it. So that's still continuing to, to grow. Those numbers are. All right. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to hit the highlights. Uh, everything seems to be going well. We're working on W 2s. As soon as I get that done, I'll get the 1099s done. Uh, the regular miscellaneous and R. And I remember the issue we had last year with the capital gains being listed on there. So. Uh, there was, a, there was something that came up on Weavis on that last year, and I'll be able to look for that issue so we don't have that problem. And then uh, right after that, and I'll try to just do them right in order. We'll do the uh, 1094s, I think is what I got to say. And while all that's going on, we've got the audit happening. The audit, yeah, audit's going on. Uh, we got a different auditor this year, and some of you may have seen him around. Uh, Thomas Dodd, he's a young guy. He's about 23, 24. He's been doing Board of Eds for a year or so. He's trained under uh, David and a few other people, but he does stuff even different than Chris did last year. Um, Chris would go weeks without even talking to me in the office. You know, I'd have to go in and say, listen, are we okay? You know, you haven't given me an update. And so, yeah, everything's fine. Uh, Tom, he's coming in all the time asking me questions. You know, I went ahead and pointed out any problems I knew we had, that maybe the things that we might have messed up that way. When he comes across them, he knows we've already addressed them, so he don't have to put that in a report. You know, I always, and, and I think I kind of, I tickle Mr. Mick here, auditor walks in the door, you just confess your sins, you tell him everything you know you did wrong, and then that way when it comes up, they can either help you or, you know, just sometimes you can uh, show them what you've done and they don't put it in a report that gets read in front of them. Mr. Priestley, Mr. Meekiff at the end of the audit. So. And then sometimes they don't tell you anything and they go in front of and they just kind of tell, tell things they didn't tell you about. That happened last year with one thing. It kind of shocked me. But uh, all the other reports, I think, we they went pretty well. He did the scores <coughs> as well. And he was, uh, he was shocked that 
profit and loss statements were such a big issue with, with the previous auditor. And I'm like, you're kidding, right? You're not looking at that? Well, I wasn't looking at them real hard. I was like, well, listen, they about sent me packing over that one. I said, tell me you're at least looking because I corrected the problem. <laughs> I just want to say they still need to be. Well, there, there's still some stuff that, there's still some that was missing. So, uh, they, they, they would check to see what we're, what we're receiving in the way of uh, revenue from oil production here in the county. Remember I asked you that once other than talking to the guy, and I didn't do that. I remember that now. I can give the guy a call. I can do that this week. That should be something that's increasing almost every month, I would think. So that's that's being it's active again around here. I mean, it's something that's oh, he's off the period. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, We're moving I'm not over there, there like crazy. Well, anytime they get active, yeah, that, that should be going up. Now, I don't know when we would see those that tax revenue, whether it would be next year or this year. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works. To be honest with you, how they have to pay <coughs> coming out, you know, whenever they bring the stuff out of the ground. And, <coughs> you might just have a guy. He would be able to tell you. Yeah, I'll give guy. I know they're moving at least two tanker trucks out. Maybe more than that. I know they're moving to average. All right, anyone have anything else that they want to discuss about finance? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to the administrative section. I have a motion to look at those, please. So moved. Mr. Wilson and Mr. Baker. Okay. Mr. Mickey? Okay. Item A. School volunteers who on occasion may also serve as bus chaperones for athletic events, academic competitions, or school outings and have completed the volunteer orientation. Item B is the adoption of policy 134, promotion of school board effectiveness. This uh, adoption of not approval of the board will satisfy the requirements of House Bill 206 that requires the local boards have such a policy in place. Item C is a policy for 30-day public review and comment. It's available for review at our county website under information announcements and public review. And it is 2510 adoption of instructional materials. And our resident expert, Mr. Kevin Pritchard, is here to give you on the contents of this new policy and why it came about. Okay. Answer any questions. Mr. Pritchard. Yeah. <coughs> Well, this textbook adoption policy, and I know Mr. Priestley has been through that a, a few times with. Uh, Thanks his, to Mr. Wilkerson. Yeah, he won't put you on that. He's one that nominated me. Thank you, Larry. What happened, actually, not in the last legislative session, but the previous legislative session, they changed, the legislature changed the rules on it. And for the past year and a half, almost two years, we've been waiting for the state to get their policy together and they, it took a while to do that. Basically, what happened in the whole thing, the multiples list as, as we know it is gone, okay? No longer are, in the, in the past, publishers would, they register, they give books to the state department, they bring a committee in, they develop those uh, books or approve that it were at least 80% of the content needed. For whatever reason, they decided that that was no longer necessary to do that, that the county should do that. You know, to go and get all these publishers come in and each county do it, which, you know, for smaller counties in particular, that would be crippling almost to be able to do that and like I said for somebody that's been through that process it's it's not an easy process anyway however the state does still they're still going to look at some of those if if the publisher so desires that they do that okay they won't necessarily look at all of them the publisher actually has to ask them to do that but the county's not required to 
just go by that list that the state is looking at. However, in our case, we've kind of decided to go that direction. If the state, they're going to take you that part of it, review it, give us that 80%, and then we'll take those books that are out there before we would make an adoption. The state multiple list comes out, and all counties were required if you were going to choose math books to choose from those that, that are in the state, you know, the state uh, textbook committee yeah. and had it approved by the state board. Those were the only books you could get, right. those math books, and now they've eliminated yeah. them. They're going to let you go outside of that if you so choose to do that. Still have to review them and make sure that they meet all the requirements, yeah. but they don't have to be on that list anymore. Which again, for smaller counties, smaller staffs, it would be unreal. I actually talked to a couple of publishers how they were going to handle that, you know, because just because we only buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of books and not a million dollars worth, you know, we still want those same services that, and most of them that I've talked to says, well, you know, we're not going to leave you for that. But I guess for some of the bigger counties, it allows some of those publishers to go in and offer a book that wouldn't necessarily, I guess it would have to meet the requirements, but they don't have to go through that department, the state department, other than just to register as a vendor. Before the way it was, is that's the way you kind of protected everybody because the committee would develop some right. criteria that they had, had to be met. Then when each publishing company would come before you, you'd have to like go through them and make sure and that, that way they couldn't you know, do something that was, uh, harmful to small right. counties or small counties. something like that. It made it more even. So it's it's kind of hurt us this past yeah. action has. But I think with ours, I think we've got you know, a good policy together that'll keep it and keep good instructional materials out there for yeah. students. Let me make sure I understand. They're still going to give you some suggestions. Yes. You don't have to, you can go outside of that. That is correct. That's the way I understand it right now, Mr. Christian, anyway. It's, it's still a little cloudy the way it has come down to us and even there at the state part. Like I said, they it's been at least a year and a half that they've been working on their part of it to try to develop it and then provide us with a template. And then all of a sudden, what, a month ago, we get it. Well, we need this. We need this done in January after it's been running around. What textbooks are up for adoption this year? This coming year is Charter's Education, uh, wellness, which probably would include health and the arts, music and art. Is a, this is actually a small yeah, adoption. A good one to Yes, to, to, to try this out on. Uh, and then next year, I think, is when, actually it listed in there, I think it's language arts next year that starts the. Yes, it is. Language arts will be the next one up. So I guess we get a uh, kind of a dry run this year with these and make sure that, that how that's going to work out. But uh, for the most part, the way we handle it and the way we've been handling it for since I've been here and years before, you know, we'll still do the same. We'll have a committee of teachers from each school and each uh, grade level, whatever, we're depending on the adoption, and they'll have an opportunity to look at the materials, take them back, share them with their staff, and then that committee will come up with some recommendations that we'll, uh, we'll bring back to Mr. Midkiff and the board for public review, and kind of the same process we've always used. It's just... What, exactly at what level, at point do they, will they be on available for the public to come in and look at them? Once they go to, uh, well, Normally, we do that once they're actually out on public review. That's what I mean. Yes. Is that after, after once you, we yes, once the board has, one. yes. Okay. Once the committee has come to some decisions on what they want, bring that to the board, and then at that point, we'll go for the uh, public review. At the end of that, if there's no objections, then the board, the board has chosen, that. or, you know, the recommend, superintendent right. recommended the board has chosen textbook X. Right. And then the public can come in and look at that. Right. The okay. big thing that we've, uh, I've seen over the past couple of years is just that there's not any, uh, not any offerings out there a lot of times. You know, we went through this social studies adoption here last year, uh, and 
there was no publisher offered anything at, uh, at K-5. None of them. Or Western History. Or Western History. We used to have to uh, deal with it was West Virginia History because nobody in yeah. it was just affected here, yeah. so you didn't have a lot of uh, We finally did get a West Virginia History that came on late, and the state went ahead and put that on the multiples list, but it was, you know, we were pretty much making the adoption before that ever happened. What people don't, may not understand is textbooks are made for Texas, California, New York, because that's who buys them all. So they're going to put the content in there that those people want. And that's sometimes why they don't even bother with some of the smaller states and right. so forth. But we're not going to rewrite our book just to meet your If you standards. get certain criteria in there, we're not going to change that. Here down on, on the first page there, down where uh, F and G, um, that's your uh, timeline and all that. Uh, then on G is submit a recommendation to the superintendent. Then would it be after that? Maybe give it over to the board. Yeah. Okay. That's that point's when they would go to the board and then be on public review. Okay. From that point on. Yes. Yeah. Flexibility. Uh, I, yeah, I guess that's what it is. More yeah. local control, or not. More local control, right? All right. Do you want to have anything, of, uh, Kevin? Anything else about the Okay. Uh, I do is out of state travel to the following personnel, and uh, we need to make a change. Uh, that says Title One funds for Super Congress and Paulie Smith, and that should. Title II. And finally, item E out of county student transfer for the 2019 2020 school year. All right, does anyone have any concerns or questions with any of those administrative items? If not, is that all? Yes, vote on that. Yes. All right, let's go to finance. Motion, please. Hi there. Carol made that motion. Second by Larry. Ray. A schedule of invoices total one million one hundred seven thousand six hundred and eight dollars and forty cents. Uh, you got a question? Just let me know. Uh, county pension B, a county pension for the following retired employee, paid from the excess levy fund. Is that an all yes on the uh, finance items? Yeah. Okay. Then personnel, could you see the motion, please? Browning made that motion. Fred seconded that motion. Okay. Item A, employment of extracurricular personnel. Item B is the employment of substitute service personnel pending completion of all requirements and issuance of bus operator credentials. Item C is a leave of absence. And at the bottom, we need to please amend the minutes of the December 17th, 2019 meeting for West Hamlin Elementary teacher Summer Nottingham to reflect her resignation effective date to be January 10th, 2020. I have, no one has any issues with those. Is that an all yes on the personnel items? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that brings us down to comments and concerns. Board members, haven't seen each other for a while. Anybody got anything to bring up tonight? <coughs> if not, then we're going to ask Mr. Mickey if he does. Okay, a couple items. Um, one is um, we need to schedule an expulsion hearing, a special meeting. Student bring a knife to school is going to pour in some blades. It's one of those automatic situations. I've got some dates here that we can look at. <coughs> There's no board meeting next week, so I thought maybe we can look there first for uh, possible dates. Next Tuesday, January the 14th. Works for Rabbit. Works for everybody. Carol, do you know if that would work for you or not next Tuesday? Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, what time are we thinking of? 
Uh, we can go five or six. school today for inclement weather. On the next board agenda, I'll have the makeup date, which appears to be the OS day on February the 14th, Valentine's Day. I was looking forward to having that day. Look around, make wipe out stuff like So it looks like the makeup date um, will be Friday, February 14th. Yeah. They've already stopped it. Did we not have an executive session? Yeah. You know, it was the last session. Oh, I see it. Like right, if I didn't have it, you know, I'm going to do it. I'd request a legal update. Uh, to provide okay. a legal update. That's, that's, that's all right. Do you have nothing else to do except for that? Is it personnel? Personnel, yes. Yeah. All right, uh, so Mr. Mukip has requested a executive session for personnel reasons at 6.33 p.m. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Certainly. Mr. Baker made that motion. Second. Second by Mr. Curry. All yes to go into executive session, 6.33 p.m. Yes. Yes. All yes. 